Hello and welcome to this ET Now special. Today we are joined by Prashant Ruya. Thanks Prashant for joining us here on ET Now. SR of course concluding what you are terming as the largest FDI inflow deal into the country and enterprise valuation of about $13 billion, 98% stake sale in SR Oil. Give me your first reactions first. How difficult was it to get this deal sealed to? Because the MOU with Rosneft was signed last year. First of all, it's a fairly large and uh, complex uh, transaction. And the way it, it evolved, the transaction evolved, uh, took us some, some time. Uh, one of the added uh, complications was the requirement of delisting uh, SR Oil, which was also done uh, you know, in a similar time frame. So, uh, as, or as part of this time frame. So, uh, yeah, but, but we're happy we, we got, to the, uh, got to the end of it and, uh, and we're very satisfied, very happy that it's a very, uh, we, may, we were able to make an announcement uh, and com conclude so all the documents So when did you decide yesterday. that, no, not a 49% stake sale, let's pretty much exit, you know, it's 2%, keep a token amount only. When did you decide this? So it wasn't a question of, and I think we were always talking about a percentage which was higher than 49. Uh, there was always a discussion with uh, Traffic Gura for a, for a long time to, to also take a share. We felt that the value was uh, attractive. Uh, we felt that our philosophy has always been that you know we invest in uh, in in a business, uh, we build it over time. We we think we are able to build a world class or a world scale business, and then we look at an opportunity to uh, monetize. And uh, and if you look at most of what the group has been doing over the over the many years, uh, our shareholding generally has been very 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 high. So I think that the call was between uh, retaining a minority shareholding vis-a-vis -vis an attractive valuation. Mm. And so we, we took the call of, uh, of going with a higher monetization. Prashant, you know, the problems that the group has been facing of late are, of course, no secret. Uh, there is a mammoth debt that you've been having to deal with. I'm sure there's a lot of pressure from the lenders. There are the legal troubles that keep you busy. What I want to understand is, how did you not manage to sell at a distressed price? I'm sure there was a lot of pressure from the lenders. Instead, you're walking away and calling it the largest FDI inflow into the country. Well, firstly, I want to correct some of this uh, debt uh, and perception issues. I think most of that is related to the steel business. Uh, if you really look at the performance of the rest of the group, uh, other than the steel business, which is the oil and gas business, the port business, even the power business, uh, our international investments, like our refinery in the UK, uh, they've, been doing, they've been doing fairly well. Unfortunately, it's just that the steel business has been getting much more of the media limelight, if I may, if I may say so. Uh, and, and yes, it's true that the steel business has gone through uh, a difficult uh, patch over the last two, three years. Some of it was our making, some of it uh, was, what, a global meltdown. was what's happening in the global commodity space. Uh, but, but so I, so I think most of the debt or most of the banks' issues uh, are largely related to the steel, to the steel side. It's forty-four thousand crore rupees of debt. Yeah, I mean it's a seventy thousand crore investment, and a twenty thousand crore equity investment, mm. which people don't normally uh, realize that if you make a large investment in the country, in any country, uh, you have uh, there is going to be uh, a portion of debt and there is going to be a portion of equity yeah. and uh, normally that's in the ratio in india the ratio that's in the ratio of two to one so there's about a 35 percent equity investment uh, in all these investments and uh, and it's supported by an asset which uh, which generally uh, sh uh, should have a very strong earning potential i will give you an example even if you take sr oil uh, you know five seven years ago sr oil went through a difficult patch uh, uh, the project was, was, was stalled. The Supreme Court. Uh, the, we, had a, we had a court saying that we could not, you know, continue construction, uh, etc. And we, and, we, and we did go through a, a, a difficult period. And it, the same questions were asked then of SR Oil. And uh, if you look at, you know, what has happened over the last seven, eight years in SR Oil, it's been a very steady performance. Once the assets go into production, once they start generating to their potential, you, you generally come up with, uh, generally, hopefully, uh, come up with a good result as we have seen in SR Oil. And you know, you've been very uh, vociferous about the fact that you want to increase the capacity of SR Oil. You want to double it. 
but now you've sold it. So what happens? Are you going to be involved at all with uh, Trafigura, Rosneft, UCP to fulfill that, that dream of doubling the capacity? <laughs> well, well, the reason we've always been talking about uh, doubling the capacity is that, you know, the way this complex was conceived uh, back, even back in the day, was uh, of an 800,000 barrel a day refinery. Uh, today we are a 400,000 barrel a day refinery and the way it has been designed uh, is, is um, uh, keeping in mind that this will be expanded and the layout and the infrastructure, a lot of the infrastructure for the expansion is already built into the existing refinery. So it was always part of the, uh, you know, the larger plan uh, to build a refinery and, and to double it. And I think one of the things which has attracted uh, Trafigura and uh, Rosneft is the, is the fact that this can be expanded very quickly very, uh, and a lot of the work for the expansion has been done and that holds, uh, you know... Uh, is that how, why you were able to charge a premium, if I can call it that? Yeah, I mean, it, uh, uh, the valuation has many, many aspects. Uh, one of the key aspects is the fact, and I think the primary aspect is the fact that India is the third largest oil-consuming yeah. nation uh, with, uh, with one of the hi highest growth possibilities over the next two decades, right? So if you, if, you, if you look at other countries, including China, and look at their growth from where they are now, uh, then India really stands out as a country which can offer a huge, potent, huge growth. So, so that's one, clearly one of the main attractions. Obviously, we believe that the quality of the asset and the, quality, and the retail network which has been built up uh, is, the, is the second reason. And a third reason is uh, is clearly the ability to expand and grow and... So you are know, you going to be involved in that? Because to be quite honest, Mr. Ruya, you know, what you produce right now is what? Not even 10% of Rosneft's global production. They don't really need anyone to help them ramp up capacity. But are you going to be involved at all in any kind of a transitionary No, phase? I mean, obviously, uh, uh, our support uh, and our assistance uh, to Rosneft and to Trafigura is fully available. But the way the company is currently structured, uh, they will have between the two, what, between the consortium and, and Rosneft, they will have a 98% stake. Our stake in this company will be fairly, uh, very minor. And so it's, it's really up to them to, to you know, decide whether they would like our assistance or not. I mean, so that's, that's, so that's, that's no conversation yeah. in that front. Um, you also have 2,700 retail pumps, the petrol pumps. Uh, SR, of course, is a well-recognized brand in the country. So is, that, is there anything in the agreement that they're going to continue with the trademark, with the branding of those petrol pumps? Yes, there is. Uh, and there, therefore you learn royalty if that happens. Uh, the, the, main, the main part is that they have, uh, there, there is a provision uh, to continue with the SR brand for now. Uh, again, over time, it's going to be their decision whether they would like to continue and for how long, uh, etc. But, but principally, uh, uh, at least for now, they will, they will have the SR brand on the retail outlets. Yes, it's true. So you're getting an enterprise valuation of approximately $13 billion. Can you tell me um, what you're going to use most of this uh, proceeds for? I would imagine is to cut debt. You said you, you'll cut yeah. debt of the group by 50%. So firstly, uh, just a quick, uh, just a small clarification. The, the, way the, the way it's done is actually two transactions. Uh, there is a $10.9 billion uh, for, the, for SR oil. And the, it's about two billion for the for the port assets, which SR Oil will be acquiring. So those are the two two numbers. But you're right. If you if you look at it together, it's yeah. twelve point nine. As regards the utilization, uh, 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 one of the coral, one of the coral, main corollaries of this transaction will be that there will be a, a significant debt uh, deleveraging, which will take place for the SR Group. Uh, I think this will be one of the largest in the in India's corporate history, where we would be we, where we, we would be uh, bringing down uh, approximately five billion dollars, a little more than five billion dollars of debt at the operating company level, okay. which is the which is SR Oil, the port, and the power plant, which is also part of the uh, transaction, and uh, an approximately equal amount of another five billion dollars of at the holding company, at our holding company. So if you put it together, it's about ten ten billion dollars. Uh, which is about 70,000 crores of debt reduction or deleveraging, uh, which will Will you also place. be using some of this for the previous intercorporate loans, repayment of that? Yes. So uh, uh, when, I mean, this, this what, I'm, what I'm referring to is actually uh, the debt reduction or the deleveraging which will take place with the, with the banks. 
Hmm. So uh, that this is the number. Uh, where, where so in addition to that, will we see anything, any repayments as far as intercorporate loans go? Yeah, so uh, I mean, when SR Oil, as, oh, we, are, we are discussing SR Oil here, and uh, in the case of SR Oil, obviously, when the transaction happens, there will most of the intercorporate facilities will be will be paid back or either paid or paid back and cancelled out. And I believe uh, some of the dues owed to Iran will also be taken. Will care also of. be taken care of. Absolutely. So can you share that number? How much will be paid off? It's about two two and a half billion dollars. Would this bring back a significant leveraging power with the SR group vis-a-vis -vis banks, especially when you talk about that 45,000 crore rupee debt of steel goes, would, would you now be able to negotiate better? You, you've shown the way by example, saying that, you know, we're reaping almost $10 billion. Yeah, I mean, um, it certainly, uh, it certainly uh, opens up a large amount of credit lines for the group. Uh, I'm not sure we have any significant plans of, of borrowing a lot right now. So... <laughs> I, 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 no, I mean in, in, in discussions. It certainly, it certainly does. It certainly, it certain, I mean, it's. I it's, mean those conversations where you could have more leveraging power with, for example, the uh, joint lender forums, where you know people are coming and offering 50% haircuts, etc. So now, you know, is is the is the negotiating chip back with you? No, I think again, it's uh, what you're referring to is again only SR Steel. Yes. And uh, yes, SR Steel needs to be addressed. And again, maybe I'll just take a minute talking about. SR Steel. So basically, uh, we went with a very large expansion from 4 million tons to 10 million tons. Uh, and about three years ago, the, 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 the steel plant we have built is in Hazira in Gujarat. It's built, it's uh, the main raw material and the main process is it's based on natural gas. And in 2011, uh, uh, we basically received a, a letter saying that the gas allocation which we had has been cancelled or has been deferred. Uh, I, this plant was built based on a gas allocation. The reason it was built in Hazira, Gujarat was because that was the landfall point for natural gas coming into onto the west coast of India. And uh, so it was, a, it, was, it was a very big, uh, you know, blow that one fine day in 24 hours notice, you lose your, you lose your main, you know, fuel or, and uh, gas. Uh, and then the plant was under construction, the expansion was under construction and we, the environment approvals which we had for the iron ore slurry pipeline or for the raw material, uh, that was uh, cancelled and one had to go through uh, a new, a completely new set of uh, rules for uh, environment or on a retrospective basis. So these two events is really what affected uh, SR Steel. and. Um, uh, obviously, apart from the fact that whatever happened globally with commodity cycle Correct, and yeah. with steel, but but these were the two primary factors, which frankly we believe were really beyond our control. You didn't want to consider imported LNG because prices fell, even spot prices fell. So that has happened now in the yeah. last one year. But in at the time when the gas was cut, uh, LNG prices were at 15, 16, yeah, 17 dollars. Oil prices were in excess of 100 dollars, and it was just not. It, it was not viable to, to run a plant based on those, those LNG prices. Uh, anywhere, even while LNG was trading at those levels, other steel plants or other uh, plants which are in gas producing countries, the gas prices were still at 3 to $4. So, so it's not that, you know, everywhere in the world, all steel companies or all power companies were paying $16, $17 uh, as it was for LNG because that's just a traded component of natural gas which is a very small part of, of the total gas market. So uh, uh, that was really what, was a, what affected SR Steel. We had a, that effectively delayed our expansion by two and a half to three years, in, during which time we paid about 15,000 crores of interest to the banking system. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and what we are dealing with now, however, since then, things have changed. Uh, gas prices have come down. You're absolutely right. LNG prices are now down. Uh, and uh, we have uh, ramped up the plant. We are now running at 70% of, of capacity. And, um, and, you know, the environment issues are behind us. So, uh, so, so you're waiting for a good valuation? No, I don't think we are looking at, uh, at uh, monetizing uh, SR Steel right now. We are, we are, we are building the business. We, uh, we believe, you know, a 10 million ton uh, steel company is, is one of, you know, it's a, it's a large facility. Uh, uh, and 
and uh, yeah. We, so you're not looking to monetize at all. You don't. You, you've anyway been against converting debt into equity, and you're definitely going to reject all of those proposals that we understand are coming from asset reconstruction companies. No, uh, our our proposal is to uh, work out an appropriate restructuring with the with the banks. Uh, there are new guidelines out which the Reserve Bank has introduced to address companies who have faced this kind of issues, uh, which are frankly beyond their control. And uh, you know, we are working for an appropriate solution where we do a restructuring under one of the new guidelines like the S4A uh, and, and move on. And I'm sure the minimum import price, uh, the imposition of that, all of that. So the government has been, the government has been extremely uh, proactive, uh, especially for the steel sector. Uh, they saw they saw the dumping which was taking place from China, uh, and uh, we, India was one of the few one of the early countries to move uh, with an MIP and more recently with an anti-dumping duty. Uh, but India is not the only country. Uh, China, uh, the U.S. has imposed very very uh, strict uh, anti-dumping um, you know provisions uh, on China, and uh, and so has uh, so Europe is also considering something similar. So uh, we are in line with what other countries other in the countries. world are doing uh, and there was a but even the commodity prices have corrected a lot since since the you know steel prices were down to 250 260 dollars and they are up uh, they're they are up significantly from there now so so there has been also a correction taking place in the steel market and of course the government's uh, uh, steps have been very timely and uh, very effective would you have sold SR oil had there been no pressure from lenders? Because we understand there was pressure from lenders. You can correct that if that's not the case. But would no, you have sold it? I don't think uh, it was pressure from lenders which drove our decision. Uh, as I said, the lenders issue is an SR steel issue. Uh, it's not everybody's SR mixing it up with the rest of the group. It's not the case. Uh, as far as SR oil is concerned, we've had no issues uh, at all. Companies performing very well. The, in the current year, we will do between. Eight to ten thousand crores of EBITDA, uh, and probably a net profit of four thousand crores. So the companies performed excellently over the last few years, uh, and I think it was a view. As I said, our philosophy has been to build value and to monetize at the right uh, at the right time, and we felt this was the right time for for monetizing uh, SRO. In Goa, the investment bank that did this transaction, VTB, the CEO, Mr. Kosin, has been quoted as saying that it's also going to lend $3.9 billion to SR for debt reconstruction. Uh, what is this So, about? principally, uh, VTB has been a very major uh, uh, relationship uh, bank and a supporter of what we have been doing at SR Oil and at SR Energy over the last two, three years. Uh, they are... Uh, they are providing us a facility of $3.9 billion at the holding company. Uh, and uh, this is largely being used to, uh, to repay most of our holding company debt. This is more like a bridge, uh, a bridge, bridge facility, financing. which will get uh, largely taken out when this transaction closes. So, which so it's will, part of this transaction. Exactly, exactly. It's not in addition no, to no, the transaction. No, no, because I was also a little confused when I was uh, reading all of these reports that, hey, what is this? I wanted to get your clarification. No, no, it's very much part of the transaction. Okay. The 2% that's left over, you know, we also have a court ruling uh, when it comes to paying out the minority shareholders. I understand the equity valuation of this deal is pretty much at the delisting price. Uh, so how is all of this going to play out? Now? So uh, let me let me uh, just clarify for from a minority shareholder perspective, when we when we delisted SR Oil, uh, we did give a commitment uh, to to SEBI and to the public shareholders that if there was any transaction done. Uh, by us at a higher value, then we would make we would make the the minority shareholders would not lose and they would get the same price mm. as the ninety percent shareholders. Mm. Uh, so we we that was a commitment made uh, and again we clarified yesterday in the press conference, but I don't think it was so clear that uh, that we we have every intention and we will obviously uh, honor that commitment. What that means is that. Uh, uh, that there will be a additional payment uh, to the minority shareholders when the deal closes, right? Uh, what that exact amount is, we don't know yet because the exact share price will get determined by the time the deal closes. Okay. But but whatever that whatever that increase is will be given 
to the minority shareholders as well to the 90% shareholders. So all the minority shareholders watching you at the moment, uh, by when can they expect that? <laughs> uh, well, we've announced uh, to try and get the deal done in the next uh, three, three to four months' time. So that's the timeline. It is obviously a deal like this is subject to some regulatory approvals and, uh, and uh, consents. And that's that's what we have to wait for. Uh, I we, we we don't control, you know, every, yeah. every part of that. But yes, we are working towards. Uh, uh, three to outside four of the time. courts, I think uh, getting all the other regulatory approvals, whatever they may be, from the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas, are all pretty much not in the bag. But will not be difficult, considering this has been signed in the presence of Narendra Modi and Vladimir Putin. Yes, I, I think uh, uh, both the both the governments, uh, the respective governments, have been. Uh, looking at this, uh, have, have looked at this very positively. It's a tremendous fill-up to the bilateral relationship between India and, and Russia. And frankly, Traffy is, is going to play a very major role uh, in, the tra in the global trading. Uh, both it becomes a very serious player in the country now. Exactly. It, had a, it has been in India. I think it has been an office of, what, 600 people. But suddenly, they're, they're in with the big league. The they're big in boys. the big league. It's a, it's a very large uh, um, opportunity for them to, both on the crude side, uh, and on the product side, which I'm sure they will, uh, they will, they are looking at, uh, and uh, yeah, so it's 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 a it's a it's a it's a transaction which will help India. As, as you know, India has also invested very heavily. In, in Russia. fact, in uh, yesterday there was also a lot of announcements. I think India's in total invested close to six billion dollars in oil fields in in Russia, mm. in OV, I think OVL and some of the other public sector companies. So it's this is not happening. This is not only one way. This is a two way. Uh, at least in the oil and gas space, it's been a two-way um, uh, uh, situation where India is investing, Russia is investing. And, and also, uh, you know, I think the relations are obviously improving because if you see the kind of commentary that we got from Russia, even on our foreign policy situation uh, against Pakistan, URI attacks, it all seems to be fitting in very well. Yeah, I guess so. I'm not. I'm not an expert. On, I'm not an expert on that, but yes, it, uh, the 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 uh, sound bites coming out of. Uh, even out of Goa, were very positive. So, what could we expect next? You started this interview by also saying you like to big, big, uh, build big businesses, get good valuations, and exit. So, what is what can we expect next? So, the, poten the potential in our other portfolios is is very large. As I said, India is still at a very early stage of of development, and um, and uh, over the next you know four or five years, these sectors, whether it's the power sector or the port sector, or the oil, the oil and gas sector, what are uh, what is left? What is left in after the transaction or the steel sector, we believe holds a huge potential, and uh, and we we are going to invest and grow uh, to realize this potential. And uh, yeah, that that's that that's that's the model. But you said steel, you're not looking to monetize right now. No, there's no there's no plan. So you could we be don't, power we don't need to, We don't we don't need. I think this is this is a substantial uh, uh, monetization. Uh, it's one of the largest ever done mm. in India. Uh, and it addresses, uh, you know, many of the concerns you've been trying to raise. Right. And with that, Mr. Prashant I'm going to thank you for joining us here on ET Now. Thank you. And being so candid and honest with all of the questions. Thank you thank so much. Thank you so much for thank joining you. us. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash ET Now. And don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at ET Now Live. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash user slash ET Now.